ya muchas personas están vacunadas y es muy importante para nosotros como proveedoras estar vacunadas. Es una protección grande para nosotros estar vacunadas. Y... Thank you to everyone that made this possible and looking forward to getting back into normal life. Governor Newsom, I want to thank you for ensuring that our firefighters had enough vaccines to go out and vaccinate our community, taking vaccines door to door and ensuring that we're ending this pandemic. I can't thank you enough. Estoy agradecida con el gobernador que nos dio la oportunidad de tomarnos esta vacuna. Gracias a, a él hemos, hasta ahorita 20 millones de personas se han vacunado, entre ellos muchos trabajadores, y pues es una esperanza uh, que si llegamos a contagiarnos no parar en el hospital. Thank you, Governor Newsom, for making sure that my little county had access early on to getting the vaccine. And I hope that all Californians when the vaccine becomes available to them, that they will get their vaccination. Because this is the only way we can protect each other. delegates and guests. To introduce California State Insurance Commissioner Ricardo Lara, please welcome President of the California Professional Firefighters, Brian Rice. Hello, California Democrats. I'm Brian Rice, President of the California Professional Firefighters. I bring greetings from the more than 30,000 frontline firefighters, EMTs, and paramedics in California. Last year's record fires were the latest in an increasing siege of devastation. Eight of the 10 largest fires in California history have burned in the past decade. This job takes a toll on my members, not just battling record blazes, but when the alarm comes in and California firefighters answer the call, we see and do things most people should never have to see and do, whether it's a vehicle accident, a child not breathing, or a mass shooting. In our line of work, we don't ask for praise or glory, but we recognize hard work and those who are on our side. That's why I'm proud to introduce Commissioner Ricardo Lara to you today, because he understands the dangers of climate change and the toll it takes on my members. He's proven again and again that he will prioritize survivors of disaster over the bidding of the insurance industry, including by protecting more than 2 million policyholders from non-renewal. And most importantly, he's on our side. Commissioner Lara, thank you for your leadership during this crisis. And I'm proud to introduce you today virtually. And Ricardo, I'm proud to call you my friend. Thank you for that introduction, Brian. I'm inspired by what our firefighters do every day as they put their lives on the line. And I know that I will always stand with you. It is so good to join you this weekend and California Democrats across our state. Even though we gather virtually, it's always energizing to come together and fight for our shared vision. Last year has been heartbreaking and heartwarming, full of endless despair at times, but also boundless hope. We rallied and marched, we flipped the United States Senate, we took back the White House, and more importantly, we evicted Donald Trump out of the Oval Office. But our work isn't done. I know mine surely isn't. My parents came to this country from Mexico, propelled by a dream without documents, determined to create a better life. Now I'm determined to make a better life for nearly 40 million Californians. And I want you to know that as your insurance commissioner, I am on your side. Estoy de tu lado. The insurance industry, they don't particularly like me, so you know I'm doing something right. But this gay Chicano won't back down. Bullies have never scared me, and I've been fighting the industry to put money back in the pockets of consumers during this crisis and beyond. I'm leading the effort to protect you from wildfires, flood, and heat waves by getting our insurance companies to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. But we need to do more. Right now is our moment to rebuild. Rebuild from COVID, from the vestiges of racism, and from the devastation of climate change and wildfires. That is why I've been fighting for equity in the insurance marketplace, making sure all families have access to the same cost savings as the wealthy and well-connected. That is why I've been fighting for fire survivors as they rebuild their lives, 
using my authority to protect more than 2 million policyholders when insurance companies try to flee and not renew their home coverage. That is why I'm pushing our insurance industry to promote safer homes and communities and pushing back against excessive insurance rates. Why I created the nation's first climate and sustainability branch within my department and why I sponsored legislation to allow wildfire survivors to better access their benefits. I'm fighting climate change and protecting consumers during a disaster because I'm on your side. I'm fighting the insurance industry and pushing back on excessive premiums because I'm on your side. I'm fighting to expand universal healthcare for all because I'm on your side. As Democrats, this is our moment to deliver hope and rebuild stronger by demanding corporate America put people over profit, by demanding we expand healthcare, and by demanding that we solve the climate crisis. I look forward to continuing these fights and more with you and of course by your side and seeing you in person very soon. Thank you, Democrats. Gracias, Democratas. Hi, my name is Helen Chapman, Secretary with the Santa Clara County Democratic Party. I am proud to be a part of Dem 2022 and know that my monthly donation goes to support grassroots powered efforts to turn out the vote. It is so important in local elections that we all do our part to get involved. Thank you so much and we really appreciate your support. What a year it's been. We at the building trades have been working hard, keeping a half million construction workers on job sites, working safely, supporting their families, and keeping the state's infrastructure open during this deadly pandemic. Never have we been more aware that we truly are all in this together. As organized labor and Democrats, we must support each other. On behalf of the half million workers, of the building trades. We'd like to thank the firefighters, the nurses, the healthcare workers, the nursing home workers, the teachers for taking care of us, taking care of our families, taking care of our children. You were here for us, we are here for you. We are here for the Democratic Party and they are here for workers. This is the party of workers. Enjoy the convention and we'll see you in the trenches. Thank you. Delegates and guests, please welcome California State Congressional Caucus Chair Zoe Lofgren. So congratulations to all the newly elected and returning officers and to all of our delegates, thank you. Our congressional delegation enjoyed a stellar working relationship with the California Democratic Party in the last cycle. And it's a big reason that Democrats control 42 out of the 53 seats in California and narrowly held on to the House. We wouldn't have done that without you. President Biden and our own Vice President Harris have been pushing an aggressive agenda that in many ways reflects the priorities and values of the California Democratic Party, things we've been advancing for years. The Democratic Congress has already sent President Biden a historic rescue package, and the House has moved quickly on HR1 on immigration reform, infrastructure, climate, and environmental justice, and so much more, despite lockstep Republican opposition. We simply can't afford to give Republicans the House in 2022. Actually, I don't see how we can keep the majority if we don't do our part in California by protecting frontline members and winning back the seats we lost in the last cycle. Mike Levin, Josh Harder, Katie Porter, They've been doing a fantastic job in Congress since 2018, and we're very focused on making sure they win re-election. We're still waiting uh, to see what the new districts will look like after redistricting and waiting to see 
who will run in our prime pickup opportunities in what is currently California 21, 25, 39, and 48. But regardless of the candidates, we know this, we'll need to sell our agenda to voters on the ground, and we'll need to work to hold the newly Republicans accountable for the actions they've taken here in the House. We lost these four seats by the narrowest of margins last cycle. And I know I'm eager to get back into the field, to get out the vote and make sure that never happens again. A robust field operation, year round voter engagement, it's all crucial. And thankfully, nobody does organizing better than the California Democratic Party. We have something else on our agenda, and that's to make sure that this misguided recall effort against Governor Newsom is soundly defeated in November. It will help us get organized for the election that will follow shortly afterwards. So on to victory, Democrats. It's good to be with you virtually, and I look forward to
Delegate staff and guests, welcome to the afternoon session of the virtual 2021 California Democratic Party Organizing Convention. Please welcome first partner of California, Jennifer Siebel Newsom. Hi everyone, I'm so excited to be joining you, even if virtually, for this year's California Democratic Party State Convention. I know that the past year has been hard on everyone, especially communities of color that have been disproportionately impacted by the pandemic. Our frontline workers who are keeping our communities safe, fed, and moving forward. And of course, our women who are overrepresented in frontline jobs and have also been pushed out of the labor force in record numbers. And our hats should go off to working moms who have juggled unprecedented responsibilities this year. And while this moment of crisis has shined a bright light on systemic inequities and economic inadequacies, this moment of crisis also presents a moment of opportunity and hope. Hope to build back better with women at the center. And California isn't waiting. Nope, we're meeting this moment by investing in women's economic recovery now. We know that increasing access to capital is one of the most critical ways that we can support women entrepreneurs during this time. And that's what California is doing with the Small Business Grant Program, which has awarded over half of its grants to women-owned businesses. In addition to these grants, the governor also included a proposed 35 million dream fund in his budget to offer additional capital to entrepreneurs from underrepresented groups, including women, to start new businesses. And with women representing three in five workers in low-wage industries, California's Golden State Stimulus and the expanded Cal EITC program provide a much-needed boost to cover everyday expenses for women and families, including for undocumented Californians. And let's not forget that long before the pandemic, California was already leading the country on gender equity with landmark laws to increase women's representation on corporate boards and close the gender pay gap. By requiring that publicly traded companies have at least one woman on their board and three women for boards with six or more, California doubled down on efforts to increase women's representation in both the C-suite and corporate boards, and it worked. Yep, the percentage of publicly traded companies with all male boards dropped from 30% to just 3%. And although California has the strongest equal pay laws in the country, women still lose a combined $87 billion a year. Let that sink in. $87 billion a year as a result of this gender wage gap with black women earning 62 cents and Latina women earning 55 cents for every dollar that white men earn. That's why my office, alongside the California Commission on the Status of Women and Girls, has continued our work to turn the strongest pay laws in the nation into the smallest pay gap in the nation through our Equal Pay California initiative. And since launching this campaign two years ago, we have secured commitments from over 60 major California employers who have pledged to adopt best practices to close the pay gap. These companies include Adobe, Airbnb, Apple, Gap Inc., Mattel, Intel, Twitter, and many more. And we're just getting started. So today, we have the opportunity to rebuild our economy with all women, especially working moms, in mind, to recommit to gender and racial equity, and to reinvigorate the care economy recognizing the role it plays in keeping our families whole, our communities thriving, and our economy running. So let's do this, California. Let's seize this moment. Delegates and guests, please welcome former U.S. Senator Barbara Boxer. It's another exciting convention and another chance for me to thank all of you and those who came before you for taking me from an asterisk in the polls in 1992 to becoming a United States Senator. That was the year of the woman, but we have a long way to go. But I am as excited about democratic opportunities today as I was then. But first, we have to put an end to that awful recall campaign against our governor. It is unnecessary, it is opportunistic, it's a right-wing recall. 
And if these Trump Republicans want to run for governor, let them run when Gavin's term is up. But don't put us through all this chaos. We've had enough chaos for four long years of Donald Trump, and we are so done. Yes, we have a lot of work to do, the recall and getting people elected to all levels of government, but we're up to it. And that's because we speak to the needs, the hopes and the dreams of all Californians. Have a wonderful convention. Delegates and guests, please welcome California State President Pro Tempore, Tony G. Atkins. Hello, I'm Senate President Pro Tempore, Tony Atkins. It is a pleasure to be on your screens today. Let me start off by saying, in what may be the understatement of the decade, 2020 did not go as planned. It had all the makings of a great year, the year to kick out Trump and restore humanity to the White House, honor 100 years of the 19th Amendment, gather together to cheer on the U.S. in the Olympics, and of course, to celebrate Dolly Parton's 75th birthday. Well, technically that was this January, but the time all blurs together. Four months into 2021, we all know that the last year was not what we had hoped for. We experienced isolation, some more deeply than others. We lost friends and loved ones. Communities were torn apart as neighbors got sick. Favorite restaurants and shops went under. The doors of our schools and places of worship were shut. And far too many experienced brutal racism and hate-filled violence. But what has kept us going every day since March 2020 are not Jeff Bezos and Amazon shareholders, what has kept us going are working people, our essential workers, many of whom are you, our delegates. It was teachers who set up classrooms in their bedrooms and parents who set up schools in their kitchens, our home care workers who took care of our elderly relatives and helped their patients learn FaceTime so they could see their loved ones, some even temporarily staying with their clients so as not to put their own families at risk our delivery truck drivers who brought us hand sanitizer, face mask, and baking supplies. Those that are represented by a union and those that should and need to be represented by a union. Our grocery clerks who came to work every day to make sure people could get the essentials, especially early on when they had to referee toilet paper wars and rations. Our hotel workers who made sure rooms were ready for essential workers, healthcare workers, and those who needed to quarantine our restaurant workers who continued serving communities through takeout and curbside pickup and outdoor dining, helping us to keep a sense of normalcy when it was most needed. Our farm workers who sacrificed so much to make sure there was no disruption in not only our states, but our nation's food supply chain. And our healthcare workers and nurses. What else can we say but thank you? All essential workers have endured struggles in their own lives but nevertheless, they have stepped up and made a difference for all of us. Here in California, my colleagues in the Senate Democratic Caucus, together with Speaker Anthony Rendon and Governor Gavin Newsom and I, were proud to step up and stand with you on the ground in our districts and on the Senate floor. We passed legislation to protect renters from losing their homes. We took early action this year to pass a stimulus package that provided billions in emergency relief for struggling Californians and small businesses. We passed 10 paid sick days for California workers, so no one has to face the choice between following COVID health directives or losing their jobs. We created a path forward for schools to reopen safely and to get teachers vaccinated. And still we know, Democrats know, that our work is far from finished. There is still a great deal of work to be done. We will do the work. We will put people first. We will get past COVID and get back to better on the other side because we're Democrats and that's what we do. So thank you delegates and above all, thank you essential workers. And as my favorite vaccine funder, Dolly Parton says, it's been a long, hard fight, but I see a brand new day of dawning. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the convention. We are SEIU Local 1000. 
the largest public sector union in California. We are 96,000 state employees who provide vital services to all Californians. We build and maintain the roads and bridges that crisscross the state. We manage natural resources and encourage our agricultural bounty. We enhance public safety and support the justice system. We collaborate with teachers, schools, and parents to provide world-class education. We license drivers, collect taxes and fees, and promote a healthy economy by helping the unemployed return to work. We protect the public's health and shape positive health outcomes for our families and our communities. Serving the Golden State in more than 200 departments and over 2,000 work sites, our members contribute more than $6 billion to California's economy. We are SEIU Local 1000, and we keep California healthy, safe, and strong. Delegates and guests, please welcome Founder and Executive Director of Ocapica, Marianne Fu. Hi, I'm Marianne Fu, and I'm with the Orange County Asian and Pacific Islander Community Alliance. This past year has been really challenging for us. We've not only had to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic and increase our services for uh, education around COVID, as well as vaccinations, but we've also had to deal with a lot of challenges in the community where community members are being scapegoated and attacked uh, with a number of hate incidences and hate crimes. In 2020, nearly 4,000 hate incidences and hate crimes were reported against Asians in this nation. Um, and 46% of those were reported in California. Now, this is only the number of hate incidences and hate crimes that are reported. We know of thousands more that go unreported every day. And especially here in Orange County, when we talk to community members, they say things like, I'm afraid to report. I'm unable to report because it's not in my language. Um, I don't feel like anything will be done or I've had to take worse. But the result of that is that at Ocapica, uh, our mental health program, we've had our calls have tripled. We have a number of people who are calling because they're depressed. They feel isolated. They're afraid to go outside because they feel they're going to be attacked. And um, we're just seeing a really high need among older adults as well as young people. Young people might not feel like they belong. They feel like they don't belong at school. They hear different comments from their peers. Or older adults are afraid or hearing about how they are uh, being attacked and should be concerned um, about their lives. And can they go to the grocery store? Can they go out? We also see a number of businesses that feel the same way. Are they gonna be attacked or vandalized? And so at Ocapica, we've been doing a lot of work to educate the community about what a hate incident is or what a hate crime is, how to report that there's a great resource, stop aapihate.org that has the information in language that people can report. We're also providing um, wraparound services for community members to be able to support them with mental health, with resources, with victim assistance, and provide all of this in language. And so it's really important that language access is available. And at Ocapica and all of our partner organizations, we're working together to make sure that all community members know their uh, rights, their resources, and where to get help. And so just really appreciate all of the community members who are allies, who are helping us with a Stop Asian Hate campaign, and really concerned about racial justice in this time. Thank you so much. Hello, Democrats. My name is Flora Martinez. I'm a mom, a wife, a home care provider, an elected school board member, a CDP delegate, and a proud member of SEIU Local 2015 here in San Bernardino County. As a caregiver, I know we faced many challenges this past year, but it is so good to come together in this convention and continue to show resilience in building our grassroots to get us ready for our next election. I'm excited for what is to come since I know we are California strong. On behalf of more than 400,000 plus voices behind SEIU Local 2015, 
Thank you to the CDP leadership and staff for all the work you do to organize this convention and help elect Democrats like me. Delegates and guests, please welcome President and Board Chair of Churla Action Fund, Angelica Salas. Greetings to all. My name is Angelica Salas and I'm the Executive Director of Churla, the Coalition for Humane Immigrant Rights, and the President of the Churla Action Fund. During this pandemic, we saw immigrants lose their jobs and lose their lives at immorally disproportionate numbers. Many lost hope as they lost loved ones and saw the lack of attention to their pain. In their most difficult moments, Chirla was there to deliver to them cash assistance for food, for rent, and for funerals. Chirla provided personal protective equipment to workers, connected them to COVID testing and vaccines. And in just the past two weeks, we have directly helped over 2,000 undocumented immigrant residents get their first vaccination against the COVID virus. The immigrant community of California makes up 26.7% of California's population, approximately 10.5 million residents. Of these immigrants, 5.5 million are eligible to vote. They represent 25% of the electorate. Children of immigrants make up close to 50% of the children of California. Immigrants and their children are California. For the past 25 years, after the passage of Proposition 187, immigrants and their organizations have year by year advanced their rights in California. The 2.5 million undocumented immigrants living in California have also won significant victories. Today, undocumented immigrant youth have access to state financial aid, state in-state tuition, and student loan programs. Immigrant children have access to state-funded health care. Immigrant workers have benefited from access to driver's license, free legal services, COVID emergency relief programs, and the earned income tax credit. This was accomplished as pro-immigrant leadership was elected to state government, including electing two pro-immigrant Democratic governors, Jerry Brown and Gavin Newsom. These leaders partnered with Chirla to make these wins real in people's lives. That is why the recall of Governor Gavin Newsom would be devastating for immigrant families. We know that the Republican Party of California and the proponents of the recall are against the advancement of immigrants, especially the rights of the undocumented. The California Patriot Coalition behind this effort has publicly stated its disdain for pro-immigrant policies passed in the state of California. We also know that many of the Republican voters who are part of this base uh, um, are avowed Trump supporters and who are motivated by attacks on immigrants. We cannot turn back on progress. Immigrants are working and contributing over $130 billion in taxes annually and $390 billion through their spending power to build up our state. In reality, so much more has to be done to do away with the inequities that this COVID pandemic has spotlighted and to fully care for and recognize immigrants in our state. The California Democratic Party must continue to lead the way for this in our nation. It must use its power and, and work with Vice President Kamala Harris and President Joe Biden to guarantee that immigration reform, the DREAM Act, Citizenship for Essential Workers and Farm Workers gets across the legislative finish line. In California, we must pass full access to health care for undocumented immigrant adults and seniors. We can't praise undocumented immigrant workers for being essential and then allow them to be deportable, their health to go unprotected and their rights as workers ignored. The Democratic Party has to lead in creating the first of its kind California residency program that provides all immigrants, irrespective of their status, access to services and to the safety net that their very tax dollars pay for. Building on our successes together, we must continue to take decisive, bold and courageous action to fully recognize the rights and contributions for all immigrants that call California home. Hello, Democrats. My name is George Perez Velez, and I'm reaching out on behalf of our California Democratic Party in asking you to become a donor in our DEM 2022 program. DEM 2020 members like myself raise over $134,000 in small dollar contributions. 
Your support of at least $7 a month helps with voter outreach, which includes 700 text messages to young voters and 52 phone calls to California voters, among many other efforts. Join me in adding a financial commitment to your strong progressive advocacy. Let's make every race a competitive one. Si se puede. Delegates and guests, please welcome U.S. Congresswoman Pamela Jayapal. Hello, California Democrats. I'm Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal, the proud representative of Washington's 7th Congressional District and the chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus in Congress. It is my honor to be joining you today. Last year, Democrats organized and turned out in record numbers. And we not only elected Joe Biden and California's very own Kamala Harris, we also flipped the Senate and kept our House majority. We did that through years of building progressive movements in states like Arizona and Georgia, and through record turnout of Black, Asian, Latinx, Indigenous, immigrant, women, and young folks, people who understood what was at stake and made a choice to give Democrats a chance to ensure that our country works for them and not for the special interests. So thank you to you and everyone who got involved. Our popular, necessary, and urgent agenda for poor and working people of this country received a real mandate. Now the work begins to implement the bold, progressive, and inclusive agenda we promised to voters, and it has never been more urgent. As chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, I'm honored to lead our growing progressive movement inside Congress in delivering on transformative change and to work with some of your incredible progressive Congress members from California, including Barbara Lee, Judy Chu, Katie Porter, Ro Khanna, Ted Lieu, and so many more. And of course, with Speaker Nancy Pelosi, who has led us forward, as she always says, for the children. In the face of a public health and economic crisis, People are looking to us as Democrats to lead on bold, progressive change that embraces the conviction that government is a great equalizer of opportunity. And already in this first three months of 2021, we Democrats have delivered. So now our work rests in the Senate. We have to do everything possible to send these bills to President Biden's desk which means, I believe, that we must eliminate or reform the racist and arcane filibuster in the Senate that gives power in the Senate to Mitch McConnell. If we are to keep the House, the Senate, and the White House, we simply cannot go back and tell voters that we couldn't do what we promised because of Senate procedure. Voters did their part, they delivered for us, and now we must deliver for them. Now, you all know that I'm the proud lead sponsor of Medicare for All in the House, and we introduced that bill with over half of the Democratic caucus as original co-sponsors and 15 powerful committee chairs. We've got work to do, but I can promise you that our commitment to guaranteeing health care for every single person as a right and not a privilege is essential in the richest country in the world. I've also introduced a wealth tax with Senator Elizabeth Warren, and I've unveiled a Roadmap to Freedom resolution that is the North Star for humane immigration policy. All the progress our movement for justice has built is because of you. It's because you're organized, you stay engaged and united around a common goal to create a more just, equitable, and inclusive America. You've said no to hate against anyone, Asian, Black, Trans, Latinx, Indigenous, Immigrant, and yes to love and generosity. You've demanded that we take on institutionalized racism and anti-Blackness, white supremacy and exclusionary laws that have criminalized and marginalized people for too long. You have said, let's look back so we knew, know what we must do to move forward. And move forward we will. Thank you for believing in us and for supporting Democrats, including your governor, Gavin Newsom. Let's take our collective hands and let's put them on that moral arc of the universe to bend it more quickly towards justice. Si se puede.
A year ago, we were in a very, very deep and dark tunnel. We ran right into the fire of COVID. Those physicians who are in the COVID ICU were doing everything that they absolutely could to save that one additional life. Delegates and guests, please welcome Justice Advocate Frankie Curio. Fellow Democrats, my name is Frankie Carrillo. Thank you for your attention. Today, my name is preceded with titles of honor, such as father, friend, elected official to the Los Angeles County Democratic Party, homeowner, member of DA Gascon's transition team, university graduate, and most recently chair of the Probation Oversight Commission. However, I'm not here to talk to you about that. I'm here to testify about a time in my life when what preceded my name was the people of the state of California versus Frankie Carrillo. I was only 16 years old, a high school student when my life was turned upside down. I was accused, arrested, tried as an adult, and ultimately wrongfully convicted by a jury of my peers for a crime I did not commit. Before my life had a chance to take form, it was over. I was sentenced to live out the remainder of my life behind bars. Fast forward two decades later, I am now 37 years old and after a long struggle for justice by my legal team and I, the words that I yearned to hear were said by Judge Paul Bacicalupo, Mr. Carrillo, you're a free man. And just like that, I was exonerated. When I came home, I continued doing the things that kept me going while in prison. And that was advocating for justice, no longer for myself, but for those entangled in the unfair criminal justice system. I joined movements and campaigns, both state and federal, for a just and equitable system for all. I contributed to the, to the efforts to end the death penalty, close down segregated housing units, and offer second chances for youthful offenders. Through it all, courage to speak the truth was my guiding light. It's been 10 years since my release, and I'm proud of the collective efforts made by our Democratic leaders and advocates who continue to align the will of the people with progressive litigation. Speaking of the will of the people, our governor was elected nearly two years ago with 61.9% of the vote. It's unfortunate that Governor Newsom is the focus of false allegations and an attempt to recall him from the job we elected him to carry out. I met the governor soon after he was elected into office. He asked me to join him at our state capitol building when he announced a moratorium on the death penalty. He is a champion for justice for all Californians. The Republicans are attacking him by spreading falsehoods, which is something we cannot stand for. I know all too well where fear-mongering lies and the abuse of the process leads. In conclusion, think about this. We have made progressive strides towards undoing unfair laws, practices, and procedures in our state. We have a lot to be proud of, and we cannot go back to an era of division. We are, we are all voters and potential jurors. In both cases, we were asked to make a decision based on the truth. As Californians, we have a responsibility to weigh out the facts. In the case of our governor, the case is clear. We must defend him and not allow a, mis a miscarriage of justice to occur. Thank you.
delegates and guests. Please welcome California Democratic Party Secretary Jenny Bach. My fellow Democrats, it's been my honor to serve as your secretary these last four years. In my final report to you for this term, I wanna begin by expressing my gratitude. Over these last four years, I've had the chance to get to know some truly extraordinary people. Folks who've come to our party for all of the right reasons. To change our communities for the better, to use their voice in our democracy, to stand for a set of values and beliefs that start with the premise that we need to take care of each other. From Eleanor Roosevelt to AOC, people come to our party for the chance to make change. I am truly grateful for having gotten to know and learn from so many of you during my time as your secretary. And I know with certainty that our party needs to be a place where we welcome the next AOC, where we pave the way for a new generation of Eleanor Roosevelt's, where every district has a chance to vote for Katie Porter. That work starts with us. We have to take an honest look at ourselves and we need to have an honest but respectful conversation about what we find. Try to imagine what it must be like for a new activist, someone attending this convention for the very first time. They're experiencing a party where there's too much toxicity and hostility in the debates. They see a power structure that puts all real authority in the hands of one person and leaves at very few pathways for small d democracy in the Democratic Party. And they see folks just like themselves who want and expect our party to do better. I believe all of us have a place in our party. I believe all of us deserve to be heard. And I especially believe that all of us have the responsibility to do our part to make this party the welcoming, inclusive, bench-building, election-winning machine it needs to be. It doesn't matter what part of the state you're watching this virtual convention from. What matters is the kind of state you want to be a part of building. A state where health care, child care, and job training are universal. A state where climate change is a central priority and labor rights are universally respected. A state where Black lives matter, where immigrants are welcome, where my parents are welcome. A state that stands against AAPI hate, against the tragedies of gun violence, this isn't some flight of fancy. This is why we're here. So let's be honest about what we want and get clear-eyed about the invisible walls that are keeping us from getting there. That's not the work of one term. It's the work of one party. And it doesn't matter if I'm a secretary, a laborer, content creator, veteran, or student, as long as I'm a Democrat. That is the work I'm committed to because I know it's the same work you're committed to. This is our party and we won't balk down. It's been a true honor and opportunity of a lifetime to serve you all. Thank you. Today was the first day I had my mask. Anxiety is high right now, so especially with the issue we'll about PPE. Um, for the next 14 days. There are no eye protection. There is no face protection or face shields. There are no If we can't no protect products. ourselves, how are we to protect others I've in our community? I've chosen to um, have my kids stay with family members. It breaks my heart. In weeks it really without my kids, it's very, very difficult. I have never been that I'm at work right now. I'm um, actually in quarantine. I tested positive for COVID. And just knowing that they had it after and, working uh, with my three patients. little ones, it, it was it was <laughs> terrifying. And knowing what um, what I brought like home from work. The scariest the moment therapist. I think of I, all of our um, lives. I'm feeling yeah, that I am getting like punished um, for making that, that choice give, to go out there and like help what you patients. Gave wasn't enough. California State Board of Equalization members Antonio Vasquez, Mike Schaefer, and the Honorable Malia M. Cohen. Welcome and greetings to our fellow, my fellow Democrats. My name is Antonio Vasquez. I am the current chair of the State Board of Equalization. And I wanted to just 
welcome you to this virtual Democratic Convention you're about to experience. And thank our chair, Rusty Hicks, uh, for all he's done to put this thing together for you. Not only himself, but his team, and congratulate him on his reelection as our chair, continued chair of the state party. With that, our state is facing an unprecedented need for affordable housing. The governor, the legislator, and many of our state and local agencies are attempting to address it <clears throat> by getting at least 3.5 million new units in place within the next three and a half years. All affordable housing has property tax implications, which is where the Board of Equalization can help. Whether we're talking about assessed value, property tax exemption, restricted land use value, leases, and change in ownership, and even the Prop 19 that just passed. We, as a State Board of Equalization, can be a partner and an asset as we move forward to, dry, to begin to address this issue and need for more affordable housing in the state of California. I am proposing at, our, at my next State Board of Equalization meeting that we host a public hearing, if not in May, at the latest June, where we would invite experts in the field, both from the for-profit and non-profit world to come up with ideas, suggestions, and hopefully good solutions to begin to address this affordable housing crisis we have in the state of California. Some of my goals would be to invite and input and gather information from subject matter experts on current and proposed affordable housing legislation and initiatives, develop solutions to help address any property tax problems or hurdles and help identify and recommend avenues in the property tax arena for expediting affordable housing development. Now I'd like to share with you some examples of affordable housing bills and initiatives with property tax impacts for the board to address. At least five 2020 bills were signed by the governor, including AB 3308, which empowers school districts to use low-income housing tax credits to develop affordable housing for teachers and school employees on district land. I believe there is several assets out there, not only within our school districts, but also within our cities, our counties, and even federal land in the state of California that's underutilized that could turn into or repurpose into affordable housing projects to make a dent in this demand that we have in the state of California with affordable housing. I am hoping with the support of this body and many of our elected officials, not only at the local level, but at the county and state level, we can begin to address this issue and create as many opportunities for not only the nonprofit world, but also for the for-profit world to develop true affordable housing in the state of California. With that, I wanted to just leave you with that thought and wish you the best as you move forward with this virtual democratic convention you're about to experience. Thank you, God bless you, and wish you all the best. One of my proudest moments was when Governor Gavin Newsom came to the Supreme Court old chambers in Sacramento and swore in all four of the members of the Board of Equalization. When I was a college kid, I showed up at the Democratic National Convention and uh, Father Joe Kennedy gave us an Impala car to drive to uh, pick up all the delegates who were pledged to his son, John F. Kennedy, for president. And I was one of the volunteer drivers bringing all the delegates from around the country when they arrived at LAX uh, to the convention. I was born and raised in San Diego. I went away to Washington, D.C. to study law at Georgetown. I came home after working on Capitol Hill to be city prosecutor. I then ran for city council. There were 12 of us, and I was elected and became the youngest city councilman in the state of California at the time. I'm so proud to have a dedicated life of service to the people, seeing how much good we can accomplish. My name is Mike Schaefer, and I'm the Equalizer. Thank you.
Mike Schaefer is proud of his work on behalf of taxpayers across California as vice chair of the State Board of Equalization. When the pandemic struck, Vice Chair Schaefer worked with the board and Governor Newsom to initiate an executive order which aided small businesses by postponing penalty deadlines for their property tax statements, helping to keep them afloat during these trying times. Mike Schaefer co-led a 50-person statewide COVID-19 task force, creating many innovative solutions to protect taxpayers and reform tax laws. As our Vice Chair, Mike Schaefer has been a taxpayer advocate for all Californians, helping families, veterans, and seniors to navigate changing property tax laws, including the implementation of Proposition 19. That's why Mike Schaefer is affectionately known as the Equalizer. Hello, Democrats. Thank you for allowing my voice to be heard here today. Congratulations to all the officers that have won. My voice is strengthened by the courage of those who have paved the way for my generation. And I stand here today, the mother of my young daughter, proud to continue fighting courageously for her generation and those who will come after. And the fight for equity, well, it does indeed still need to be waged. COVID-19 has shown us many things. It showed us in real terms of what that fight looks like. 64% of black women and 62% of Latinx women in the state of California live in households that have lost wages in the last year. And those losses come on top of an already lagging wages and opportunities for so many. The pandemic has taken the gap between the haves and the have nots in this state and turned it into a divide that at times seem unfixable. On the California State Board of Equalization, I'm proud to represent 23 counties, including California's wealthiest and poorest. I see firsthand the shocking inequities here in the world's fifth largest economy. And I know that that divide is only insurmountable if we stop fighting. California Democrats, it's time to take the marches, the protests, the calls for justice from the streets into the halls of power. And I know I can count on you to join me. So what does true justice look like here in California? Well, it looks like women, people of color, and the working poor sitting at the table driving the policies in this state. It means true economic equity quality education for every California child, and new investments in jobs, in housing, and community health care. It looks like clean drinking water and environmental justice, child care, and full day kindergarten for our families. It means access to affordable, reliable broadband in every corner of our state. It means defeating a recall based on lies and dog whistles. True justice means accountability, equity on all levels, local, state, federal, government, especially during this and most importantly after this pandemic. So as California Democrats, we know that true justice means more than tweeting about our shared ideals. It means fighting until we see them reflected in our legislation, in our state budget, in our schools, and in our communities. This is my fight. This must be our collective fight. I am proud to be a Democrat. I'm proud to be a mother. I'm proud to be a black woman in the state of California. I'm proud to serve our community on the Board of Equalization. And as I look to reconstructing California's economy with a lens towards equity and fairness, I am proud to stand before you and announce that I will be running for California's next state controller. California has always been our nation's land of possibility, that blue beacon of progressive democracy. Well, I'm ready to help our state hold true to that promise. I hope you will join me. Thank you. Hello, Democrats. My name is Sandra, and I'm here to guide us on a short wellness break. 
This is a chance for us to take the next few minutes to do a little bit of self-care. We've all been sitting so much this weekend. So we're gonna take these next few minutes to help stretch the body, particularly our neck and shoulders. So much of the time we're on the computer, we tend to hunch over. And as we hunch, our shoulders and our back, it's tight. So what we're gonna work on doing is lengthening the spine, releasing the shoulders and the neck. For my friends who may have limited mobility, if there is something that I mention that you're unable to do, you can always visualize it. Visualizing the movement with the breath is just as effective as doing the movement itself. And so for my friends who maybe have been sitting and wanna stand, you can also do all of these stretches standing up. I'm gonna remain seated, but feel free to stand up and follow along. And so for everyone, let's separate the feet hip distance apart and root the feet down into the floor. And pressing down through the feet, lengthen the spine, sitting tall, lifting up through the chest and relaxing the shoulders down the back. And slowing down the breath. On an inhale, reach the shoulders up. And on the exhale, release the shoulders back and down. Inhaling, lift up. Exhale, release back and down the back. Last time, inhale, lift up. And exhale, release down. In your next inhale, lift the arms all the way up overhead, reaching through the fingertips. And then clasping the hands, reverse the palms up towards the ceiling and reach up, lengthening through the spine. Take one more breath here, pressing down through the feet. And on the exhale, release the hands down. So now we're gonna open up the chest, doing a slight back bend. So reach the arms behind you. If you're sitting in a chair, just reach the arms back, keeping your hands about shoulder distance apart. For my friends who are standing, you're welcome to clasp the hands behind you and reach the shoulders back. So choose the option that works best for you. Everyone reach the shoulders back, opening up across the chest. And we'll take three full breaths. Reversing all the hunching we tend to do, creating space in the spine. Last breath. And on your exhale, release your hands down to your thighs, or if you're standing, you can place your hands by your sides. And so I'll take a deep inhale together, reaching up through the crown of the head. And on the exhale, release your head down towards the left shoulder. And allow that left shoulder to release down and feel a stretch along the side of the, the right, right side of the neck. This may be a deep enough stretch, and if not, you can reach the right arm out to the side, spreading the fingers wide with your palm facing forward, and feel the stretch release all the way down that right shoulder out through the right fingertips. One more deep breath. And exhale, release the hand and bring the head back to center. Let's take a deep inhale. And exhale, just release the chin towards the chest. And so keeping the shoulders where they are, we're just stretching the back of the neck. And you can play around with the position of the neck. If you find a spot that's particularly tense, you can breathe there. And on your next inhale, bring the head back to center. And then exhale the head over to the right. Releasing that right shoulder down. You might find a difference on this side. Maybe it's a little tighter or not. You can stay here or reach out the left arm out to the side, palm facing forward. Spread the fingertips. And two more deep breaths.
On your next exhale, bring the head back to center, palms back to your thighs or to your side. Just feeling the openness of the stretch. And during the time when you're sitting or looking at the computer, notice the position of your shoulders and maybe take a chance to reach the shoulders back and sit tall. I hope you enjoyed this wellness break. I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you. Delegates and guests, please welcome former party chair and retired senator John Burton. I'd like to welcome everybody to this year's Democratic Convention. Unfortunately, there's no convention to welcome you to, but we're going to enjoy ourselves remotely, as everybody says. But the thing we have to take away from this convention is that Gavin Newsom is our governor. He's been a great governor. Nobody has come into office with a bigger, bigger bag of shit than, than Gavin did and he's coming out of it. He's making things much better in the state. Came up with a good budget that's even gonna get better. So when you leave here, have one thing in common. Beat the recall, keep Gavin Newsom, and teach the Republicans the message that they can't fuck with us. Did you get your vaccine yet? I got mine. I was hesitant at first. But now, three months later, I'm super glad I did. I received my second dose of the Moderna vaccine. And this was so important to me because I want to protect my family and my community. The first time that I went into Oakland Coliseum to get my first shot, I was sitting in the car and I just broke down in tears. I think this year has been so hard for everyone and it just felt this massive weight off of my shoulders. Yo vivo en la ciudad de Huntington Park y estoy aquí porque yo acabo de recibir mi vacuna contra COVID. La recibí aquí en el centro de trabajadores Ricardo en casa de New Union. So I feel excited. I was scared a little bit before, but I feel great now. I can protect my family. Uh, my co-workers and all the people around. Estoy muy contenta porque al, al fin pues ya me vacuné y este es muy importante que nos vacunemos porque para nuestras familias, para nuestros hogares, para para todos. My name is Daryl Roberts and I'm a 20-year firefighter for the city of Chula Vista. And I'm also a proud IAFF member and the first district vice president for the California Professional Firefighters. Receiving my vaccine was a gift, a gift that ensured my safety and most importantly, the safety of my family and the community that we're out there protecting every single day. Ya me puse la segunda dosis de la vacuna en Salinas, California, porque es importante responsabilidad de todos protegernos. Yo me pude vacunar, mi familia se vacunó y ahora no tenemos miedo y estamos bien gracias a que el gobernador trabajó mano a mano con nuestro sindicato. I would like to thank Governor Gavin Newsom. Thank you for giving this pandemic the urgency that it deserved. Thank you for supporting long-term care workers. Le doy gracias a Dios por el gobernador porque gracias a él ya me puse las vacunas y y estamos muy muy agradecidas por todo estas estas vacunas que ya muchas personas están vacunadas y es muy importante para nosotros como proveedoras estar vacunadas. Es una protección grande para nosotros estar vacunadas. Y... Thank you to everyone that made this possible and looking forward to getting back to normal life. Governor Newsom, I want to thank you for ensuring that our firefighters had enough vaccines to go out and vaccinate our community, taking vaccines door to door and ensuring that we're ending this pandemic. I can't thank you enough. Estoy agradecida con el gobernador que nos dio la oportunidad de tomarnos esta vacuna. Gracias a a él hemos hasta ahorita 20 millones de personas se han vacunado entre ellos muchos trabajadores y pues es una esperanza a que si llegamos a contagiarnos no parar en el hospital. Thank you Governor Newsom for making sure that my little county had access early on to getting the vaccine. And I hope that all Californians, when the vaccine becomes available to them, that they will get their vaccination. 
because this is the only way we can protect each other. delegates and guests. To introduce California State Insurance Commissioner Ricardo Lara, please welcome President of the California Professional Firefighters, Brian Rice. Hello, California Democrats. I'm Brian Rice, President of the California Professional Firefighters. I bring greetings from the more than 30,000 frontline firefighters, EMTs, and paramedics in California. Last year's record fires were the latest in an increasing siege of devastation. Eight of the 10 largest fires in California history have burned in the past decade. This job takes a toll on my members, not just battling record blazes, but when the alarm comes in and California firefighters answer the call, we see and do things most people should never have to see and do, whether it's a vehicle accident, a child not breathing, or a mass shooting. In our line of work, we don't ask for praise or glory, but we recognize hard work and those who are on our side. That's why I'm proud to introduce Commissioner Ricardo Lara to you today, because he understands the dangers of climate change and the toll it takes on my members. He's proven again and again that he will prioritize survivors of disaster over the bidding of the insurance industry, including by protecting more than 2 million policyholders from non-renewal and most importantly, he's on our side. Commissioner Lara, thank you for your leadership during this crisis, and I'm proud to introduce you today virtually, and Ricardo, I'm proud to call you my friend. Thank you for that introduction, Brian. I'm inspired by what our firefighters do every day as they put their lives on the line, and I know that I will always stand with you. It is so good to join you this weekend and California Democrats across our state. Even though we gather virtually, it's always energizing to come together and fight for our shared vision. Last year has been heartbreaking and heartwarming, full of endless despair at times, but also boundless hope. We rallied and marched, we flipped the United States Senate, we took back the White House, and more importantly, we evicted Donald Trump out of the Oval Office. But our work isn't done. I know mine surely isn't. My parents came to this country from Mexico, propelled by a dream without documents, determined to create a better life. Now I'm determined to make a better life for nearly 40 million Californians. And I want you to know that as your insurance commissioner, I am on your side. Estoy de tu lado. The insurance industry, they don't particularly like me, so you know I'm doing something right. But this gay Chicano won't back down. Bullies have never scared me, and I've been fighting the industry to put money back in the pockets of consumers during this crisis and beyond. I'm leading the effort to protect you from wildfires, flood, and heat waves by getting our insurance companies to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. But we need to do more. Right now is our moment to rebuild. Rebuild from COVID, from the vestiges of racism, and from the devastation of climate change and wildfires. That is why I've been fighting for equity in the insurance marketplace, making sure all families have access to the same cost savings as the wealthy and well-connected. That is why I've been fighting for fire survivors as they rebuild their lives, using my authority to protect more than 2 million policyholders when insurance companies try to flee and not renew their home coverage. That is why I'm pushing our insurance industry to promote safer homes and communities and pushing back against excessive insurance rates, why I created the nation's first climate and sustainability branch within my department, and why I sponsored legislation to allow wildfire survivors to better access their benefits. I'm fighting climate change and protecting consumers during a disaster because I'm on your side. I'm fighting the insurance industry and pushing back on excessive premiums because I'm on your side. I'm fighting to expand universal healthcare for all because I'm on your side. As Democrats, this is our moment to deliver hope and rebuild stronger by demanding corporate America put people over profit, by demanding we expand healthcare, and by demanding that we solve the climate crisis. I look forward to continuing these fights and more with you and of course by your side and seeing you in person very soon. Thank you, Democrats. Gracias, Democratas.
Hi, my name is Helen Chapman, Secretary with the Santa Clara County Democratic Party. I am proud to be a part of DEM 2022 and know that my monthly donation goes to support grassroots powered efforts to turn out the vote. It is so important in local elections that we all do our part to get involved. Thank you so much and we really appreciate your support. What a year it's been. We at the building trades have been working hard, keeping a half million construction workers on job sites, working safely, supporting their families, and keeping the state's infrastructure open during this deadly pandemic. Never have we been more aware that we truly are all in this together. As organized labor and Democrats, we must support each other. On behalf of the half million workers, of the building trades. We'd like to thank the firefighters, the nurses, the healthcare workers, the nursing home workers, the teachers for taking care of us, taking care of our families, taking care of our children. You were here for us, we are here for you. We are here for the Democratic Party and they are here for workers. This is the party of workers. Enjoy the convention and we'll see you in the trenches. Thank you. Delegates and guests, please welcome California State Congressional Caucus Chair Zoe Lofgren. So congratulations to all the newly elected and returning officers and to all of our delegates, thank you. Our congressional delegation enjoyed a stellar working relationship with the California Democratic Party in the last cycle. And it's a big reason that Democrats control 42 out of the 53 seats in California and narrowly held on to the House. We wouldn't have done that without you. President Biden and our own Vice President Harris have been pushing an aggressive agenda that in many ways reflects the priorities and values of the California Democratic Party, things we've been advancing for years. The Democratic Congress has already sent President Biden a historic rescue package, and the House has moved quickly on HR1 on immigration reform, infrastructure, climate, and environmental justice, and so much more, despite lockstep Republican opposition. We simply can't afford to give Republicans the House in 2022. Actually, I don't see how we can keep the majority if we don't do our part in California by protecting frontline members and winning back the seats we lost in the last cycle. Mike Levin, Josh Harder, Katie Porter, they've been doing a fantastic job in Congress since 2018, and we're very focused on making sure they win re-election. We're still waiting uh, to see what the new districts will look like after redistricting and waiting to see who will run in our prime pickup opportunities in what is currently California 21, 25, 39, and 48. But regardless of the candidates, we know this, we'll need to sell our agenda to voters on the ground, and we'll need to work to hold the newly Republicans accountable for the actions they've taken here in the House. We lost these four seats by the narrowest of margins last cycle. And I know I'm eager to get back into the field, to get out the vote and make sure that never happens again. A robust field operation, year-round voter engagement, it's all crucial. And thankfully, nobody does organizing better than the California Democratic Party. We have something else on our agenda, and that's to make sure that this misguided recall effort against Governor Newsom is soundly defeated in November. It will help us get organized for the election that will follow shortly afterwards. So on to victory, Democrats. It's good to be with you virtually. And I look forward to watching the rest of our speakers and hope that next year we'll all be together again in person.
As a nurse, union member, and elected ADEM delegate since 2008 from AB15, I'm committed to building a democratic party that promotes a healthy and just California. The best way to ensure my progressive values are pursued legislatively is by building a party that organizes and trains our activists. That takes money. I give monthly as it's the best way to build our party. So please join me and contribute to Dem 2022. A year ago, we were in a very, very deep and dark tunnel. Anxious, fearful, overwhelmed. Every week I had to sign a death certificate. We didn't have enough personal protective equipment. And so just being terrified that I would bring home COVID to my family. I laid in bed at two, three, four in the morning sometimes thinking about a patient or worrying about a patient. It was really important to ensure that our patients knew that the physicians were still there for them. Rather than running away, we ran right into the fire of COVID. We had to help. We had to play our part to end this epidemic. Delegates and guests, please welcome California State Treasurer Fiona Ma. Greeting fellow Democrats, sisters and brothers. I really miss our time together. However, I'm glad we have found a way to virtually stay in touch. This past year has been tough for all of us. At the Treasurer's Office, we expected an economic downturn in 2020. However, we never expected a global pandemic that would affect the entire world. Thanks to the leadership of Governor Newsom and our health experts at the federal, state and local levels, we are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. We are coming back and this state will be stronger than ever. But we can't let up. Keep up your COVID precautions and get vaccinated. You see, I was born with hepatitis B, which is directly linked to liver cancer. One out of 12 Asian Pacific Islanders has hepatitis B. It is a silent killer. And once you develop physical symptoms, it's pretty much too late. I have been at the forefront of getting APIs tested and promoting vaccinations to prevent the spread of hep B. Vaccines help save lives, and the COVID-19 vaccine is also saving lives. Now our community is under another threat. I want to thank our allies who have reached out concerning the Asian hate crimes that have been happening all over the U.S. As a daughter of Chinese immigrants, I am well aware of the struggles of all minorities in America. As Democrats, we must stand up and stand with our oppressed communities and work every day to build an America which is safe, compassionate, and upholds the truth of the Declaration of Independence, that all of us are created equal with the right to life, liberty, and happiness. As Democrats, we will fight for those rights. And as Democrats, we are committed to fight for the future of our planet. Climate change is real, it is here, and it is the greatest challenge of this millennia. We cannot allow our leaders to deny, deceive, or deflect any longer. Last year, fires raged for months across California, and today, 99% of California is abnormally dry, and 67% is in severe drought. We shouldn't have to accept the future of smoke-filled skies and record-breaking heat waves. California has been leading the way on climate change, but let's put our money where our mouth is. It's time we divest all of our public funds from fossil fuels and listen to our youth guardians, which I've had the pleasure to work with over the past year. I went into public service to make a difference in people's lives. It's that simple. I wanna lead on the issues, big and small, that help California not just hold on to what we have, but create a future that's even better. That means taking on the status quo, even when others are silent. It's why I teamed with the young climate justice advocates calling on our state teachers pension fund to embrace the values of students and teachers by divesting from fossil fuels. It's really hard speaking up at those meetings. It feels like they're not taking the climate crisis seriously. It feels like they're not taking us seriously. Other adults refuse to listen. Fiona listened. To us, it's not climate change. It's a climate crisis and environmental racism. We need more leaders like Fiona who call for divestment. This year taught us that if we are going to solve the big issues, protecting voter rights, tackling student debt, 
helping small businesses recover. We can't go it alone. We have to work together. Hello, California Democrats. I joined the Trail Razor program because we need to significantly increase the level of small donor money into the party and reduce our reliance on large donors and corporations. We are California and we must lead by example and show our support by continuing to provide financial contributions to our elected officials at the federal and state levels. Please join me in raising the small donor funds necessary to fight for issues like reproductive rights, economic justice, climate change, and protecting democracy. Delegates and guests, please welcome California State Assembly Speaker Anthony Rendon. Fellow Democrats, thank you for attending the California Democratic Party Convention and for all that you do to elect progressive candidates. Your efforts help to elect and hold a historic Democratic supermajority in the State Assembly. This supermajority your supermajority, extended the eviction moratorium and rent relief, passed a $6 billion plan to reopen schools safely, approved $600 emergency stimulus checks for 5.7 million Californians, passed a $2 billion relief package for small businesses and two years of fee relief to restaurants, bars, barbers, and beauticians, increased subsidized childcare by over $400 million and extended childcare for children of essential workers, and passed $100 million in emergency financial aid to students impacted by the pandemic. During my last five years as Speaker of the Assembly, we accomplished so many great things together. We became a global leader in reducing greenhouse gas emissions and environmental protection. We led the nation in addressing racial bias in court cases and justice reform. We were the first state to pass $15 minimum wage. We passed one of the toughest anti-predatory lending laws in the nation. We passed the toughest gun safety laws in the nation. We were the only state in the nation to pass overtime pay for farm workers. In addition, I'm proud to have closed the gender gap by instituting pay parity in the assembly and nearly tripling the number of women appointed to chair committees but we have so much more work to do. Too many Californians are still struggling. I know we all have passionate differences on policy and diverse constituencies to serve, and we have a recall to defeat and tough midterm elections to win. And we saw in 2016, it only takes one bad election to undo all the advances we have made. That's why we must work together to overcome the division, hatred, and disinformation that the Republican establishment has enabled and amplified. Let's focus on where we can find common ground and keep the true enemies of progress in our sights so we can protect the values and priorities we all support as Democrats. The Assembly Democratic Caucus and I look forward to standing shoulder to shoulder in the coming days to overcome the extraordinary challenges that we face. Thanks again for your activism and dedication to the California Democratic Party. Back at the beginning of the COVID pandemic, we had a young, relatively healthy 40-year-old man who I got called to go see early in the morning. He had been on a breathing machine just over the mouth for three or four days. Um, I made the decision that we needed to intubate him. We need to put the breathing tube down his throat. Um, he said goodbye to his daughter on FaceTime. He knew he wasn't gonna survive. And being in that room at that moment brought tears to my eyes. Um, and that experience will change the way that I, I think about medicine and I practice medicine for the rest of my life. CSEA is more than just a union of classified school staff. We remain to this day essential to the education of students across the state. 
we're in the classroom, we're teaching our students. Yes, it's an important role, but our school would not function without the people who feed our students, the people who care for our students and look out for their health. Because learning doesn't take place in isolation. I mean, we are their hands, we are their voice, we are their eyes, we are their feet. We do absolutely everything for these kids. So we can connect with these families, and that's what we're here for, to make that difference. We are essential. We are strong. We are CSEA. Hello, I'm Shoniji Robinson. And I'm Katara Coleman. And we're, we're Southern Girl Desserts. We are a Southern inspired bakery here in Los Angeles, California. My name's Antoinette Robinson, and I am the owner of Maestro's Coffee. Come on in. We opened two years ago, just before the pandemic. So, this support from the state and Governor Newsom really helped our business to stay open. They provided us with P loans, EIDL um, program, so that that way we did not have to close our doors. We are so grateful for the $15,000 grant that was given to us by the state of California and Governor Newsom, as well as a tax credit, which is allowing us to keep our employees paid and keep our business flowing during this horrific pandemic. Um, during the COVID, we have had so many um, ups and downs, and but we've been able to make it through with grants just like this one. We also appreciate Governor Newsom for all of his leadership, all of his guidance. We especially appreciate him stopping by our shop in person to find out what barriers we were having as a small business. We are so appreciative and so grateful to have such great leadership for the state of uh, California. Governor Newsom, you've really shown that you are for the people and that you are in support of small businesses. Um, we appreciate the work that you've put in uh, and we just wanna say thank you for that. Thank you, Governor Newsom. Thank you to your team. Thank you, California. Delegates and guests, please welcome Unite Here 11 Disney Hotel Steward Housekeeper Lupita Ortiz. This video includes some spoken Spanish with English subtitles. Hello delegates, my name is Ada Briseño and I'm co-president of Unite Here Local 11 and I'm here to introduce Lupita Ortiz and she is a housekeeper at Disneyland Hotel. She's been there for 15 years and she's also elected as a delegate with all of us here today. Cuando yo ya decidí ir con la unión fue cuando yo fui a parar al hospital por el estrés enorme que sufrí me dio un stroke. Y eso eso fue lo que cuando yo desperté, obviamente ahí cambió mi mi manera de pensar, no sentarme a llorar, no dejar que pisotearan mi dignidad, mi que me faltaban al respeto cada que ellos querían, mi hijo, el mayor, cuando yo decidí que iba a regresar, él no quería. Pero él me dijo que como no lo voy a hacer cambiar de idea y usted va a regresar ahí, quiero que se defienda. Cuando ya empezó la gente a ver que yo no me dejaba, la unión, se acercaron a mí y me preguntaron, ¿no te gustaría ser parte de la unión? Lo comenté con mi hijo y me dijo, usted necesita unirse a la unión. Lupita is the future and the today of the Democratic Party of California. It is working families and immigrants like her that will keep our blue wave moving forward. Pues la pandemia nos vino a cambiar la vida totalmente a todo el mundo porque esto es mundial. Perdimos trabajo, tuvimos que cuidarnos y cuidar a los que nos rodean. Entonces eso nos hizo cambiar nuestra manera de de vivir, pero igual como unión seguimos luchando por nuestros derechos, porque obviamente todo, to, las compañías están defendiendo su posición, eh, empezaron por no querer darnos aseguranza, por no seguir pagándonos, pero como unión 
nos preparamos a luchar para que nos siguieran dando nuestros beneficios, porque era importante más en tiempos de pandemia. The Democratic Party has stood with working families. In the local level, the Democratic Party of Orange County stood by workers as they fought for Measure L to increase the minimum wage for hotel workers in Anaheim. And also, the California Democratic Party supported the boycott of the Terranera Resort. A mi primera participación en una campaña fue en la medida L. Pues imagínate, qué, qué emoción que eh, eh, llegara a mi trabajo y, y que la gente se acercara a mí y me dijera, Lupita, ¿sí pasó la medida L? Sí. Cuando no había mucha fe de que pasara, porque obviamente decían, ganarle a, a, a Disney no, es imposible. Pues lo hicimos. Yo fui una de las que toqué puertas para la Catrina y me siento muy orgullosa porque logramos poner a la primera demócrata en el condado de Orange de supervisora. Cuando, cuando terminamos el último día y nos estaba dando nuestra copresidenta Ada los números, cuando ya nos dijeron es que ella había quedado ahí, para mí fue emocionante. Lo primero que hice fue hablarle a mis hijos y les comenté Logramos poner a Katrina de supervisora. Tener gente importante al frente es darnos el derecho de saber que no estamos solos, que hay gente que está apoyándonos y gente importante como los demócratas. Por eso luchamos siempre y apoyamos a los demócratas que están al lado del trabajador. Sí se puede. Hello, fellow Democrats. This is Emilia Huerta, CDP delegate from California's 21st Congressional District here in the San Joaquin Valley. As many of you know, I am a lifelong Democrat and a longtime member of our party. I had the honor of being a 2021 Democratic Party trail racer and have again pledged to raise desperately needed funds for our party's candidates in 2022. I am asking each of you to join me in becoming a 2022 trail racer and help elect down ballot candidates and our future leaders. Gracias y si se puede. Delegates and guests, please welcome U.S. Senator Alex Padilla. Governor Gavin Newsom just named the person he wants to fill Kamala Harris's Senate seat. This is big news right here. It's Secretary of State Alex Padilla. I'm honored, man. Padilla will become the first Latino to represent California in the U.S. Senate. What a tremendous opportunity and a tremendous responsibility to bring my voice to the deliberations of the United States Senate. Padilla says his top priority is fighting the coronavirus and helping families and businesses who are suffering the consequences. We need to act boldly. We need to act urgently. We have the potential to raise half a million kids out of poverty in California alone. $11 an hour is not enough of a minimum wage increase. The American people deserve better. With the passage of the American Rescue Plan signed by President Biden, resources are on the way. U.S. Senator Alex Padilla, who's the son of immigrants himself, unveiled the Citizenship for Essential Workers Act on Friday. No state has more at stake in getting immigration reform done than the state of California. You know what? I would happily pull an all-nighter each and every week if it meant delivering for California and for the country. It's a a pretty big and humbling uh, first couple of months. Hello, Democrats. It is great to be with you. When I was sworn in as California's newest United States Senator, I made it clear that my very first priority was to deliver much needed aid to frontline workers and to the communities hardest hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. 
And I'm proud to say that the American Rescue Plan, one of the most progressive pieces of legislation since the New Deal, is doing exactly that. Already, billions of dollars in aid is reaching California families and small businesses. But we need to do more. Building back better. To me, that also means building back more sustainably and equitably. This is a time for an American comeback and an economic recovery that includes everyone and addresses some of the deep divisions in our nation and addresses systemic injustices. How do we do that? It means raising the federal minimum wage to $15 an hour. It means approving a Green New Deal that creates good paying jobs while addressing climate change. It means a pathway to citizenship for the 11 million undocumented immigrants in our nation today, including the millions of essential workers who have put their lives on the line during this pandemic to grow our food, stock the shelves at our grocery store, even deliver food to our doors. It means passing S1 so that we protect the right to vote and protect all of us from the threat of voter suppression. It means advancing Medicare for all and common sense gun safety reforms. The time is now for bold action. We can't let anything stand in the way of our progress, not even the filibuster. For too long, the filibuster was exploited to delay progress and delay justice. Enough is enough. Democrats, I believe we're going to get through this pandemic by taking the bold action that this moment demands of us. And we'll do it the only way we know how. We're going to work hard, we're going to organize, and we're going to get the job done. So thank you. Thank you for your ongoing advocacy and your activism and all your support over the years. Thank you again and have a great convention. Two years ago, I told the Democratic Party not to take money from corporations that hurt people, do not pay or treat their workers fairly, and do not abide by our CDP platform. John Lewis spoke of good trouble. We must think of good money. I was challenged to raise $100,000, so I vowed to bake challahs and sell them off to supply good money. I joined the Finance Committee to help raise good money. And if every one of us, the 3,500 delegates, gave $20 to Dem 2022 monthly, the party would raise $840,000. And if each of us found five Democrats to do it also, we could raise $4,200,000. We don't need corporations to fund our party. We are the party. We can make the difference. Delegates and guests, please welcome UFCW Local 770 member, Susan Hernandez. Hi, my name is Susan Hernandez. I work at North Hollywood Food for Less, store 332. I've been with the company for 27 years. When the pandemic first hit the store, um, I think initially everyone was um, worried, but they didn't think that it would last as long. So as days and weeks progressed, um, you can see the the fear in their eyes, the, 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 you can see the fear in their, or hear the fear in their voices, and every day was a challenge. I mean, it was through communication between the co-workers that got us pretty much day by day. But I mean, as, as the weeks turned into months, people were very fearful, didn't want to come to work, but they relied on their paycheck, which made it even worse. Coming to work fearful of what health risks you might be uh, getting and bringing home to your family. I think that was the, the biggest uh, fear. When I uh, tested positive uh, November 17th, um, on November 20th, my two kids, my daughter and my son tested positive. And then on the 24th, my husband, November 24th, tested positive. I still have medical expenses. You know, I have a medication that I still take because of COVID, um, uh, you know, uh, doctor's visits. I mean, even though it was through Zoom, they still have charged me. So financially, knowing that Kroger only gave me 40 uh, hours of pay, I was out two and a half months. So I'm a little backed up. So this hazard pay has affected me and um, 
as far as falling a little behind in my bill. So this extra $5, it, it's, it's, a, it's a plus for me to get back to where I once was in November. The resilience I feel is knowing that the union was right there side by side with us and filling us in on the information or sending a text or relaying messages to me and I would therefore communicate it to the coworkers, gave them a little bit more um, how do you want to say a little bit more sustenance as far as like, okay, somebody is protecting us because at that point, Kroger, um, they were always late in uh, providing safety because if it wasn't for the union fighting for us, for our hazard pay, for our safety measures, and as far as the, um, the Democrats um, scheduling or opening sites so that we can get uh, COVID tested, it has shown, uh, it to the to the coworkers my, the coworkers at my store that the union and the democrat part the democratical party has been uh, they've been there for us they're trying to take care of the middle class people i think that governor newsom and the union are all about fighting for the working class people and their decisions his decision was solely based on what he knew at the moment and what was fair and equal and safe for the working class people I don't think that at a time like this, he should be recalled because, you know, if it, he is one of the big reasons I was able to get vaccinated. And I am so appreciative of that because he set up along with the union and I'm sure other democratic parties, he set up the first uh, vaccination. That right in itself is he is thinking of the working class people. He set up that first location to help us to benefit us and I just don't think that he should be recalled. I think that and I feel he's he's done a good job. Speaking on my story, my uh, testimony, um, it's just very, very reassuring to me and um, I've always had faith and trust in the union, but after going through something as serious as this COVID, this pandemic has, uh, I'm overwhelmingly appreciative of the union and everything they continue to do. And going forward, I just hope other uh, essential workers, other union workers stay strong, stay united because there is strength in numbers. Delegates and guests, please welcome California Governor Gavin Newsom. The entire state of California, 40 million people now urged to stay at home under Governor Newsom's order. This is a moment we need to make tough decisions. This is a moment where we need some straight talk. We need to bend the curve in the state of California. The state is making progress in controlling the spread of COVID-19. And Governor Gavin Newsom says they plan to ramp up testing in California. We want California manufacturers creating California-based jobs, developing PPE, for Californians and we hope for the nation. Big news from Sacramento that Governor Newsom and the California legislature have agreed to a $9.6 billion state COVID relief package. And California small businesses have tax relief and grants coming their way. Governor Newsom has signed a stimulus bill into law that will give 5.7 million Californians $600 payments. California is the first state offering assistance directly to undocumented immigrants. Governor Gavin Newsom estimated 10% of the state's workforce is undocumented. Uh, our diverse communities in the state of California include our immigrant uh, communities. And regardless of your status, documented or undocumented, uh, there are people in need. It's a new sign of hope for a lot of people in this battle against coronavirus. The first shipment of that vaccine arrived in LA overnight. Hope is on the horizon for the vaccination. We continue to accelerate our planning and preparedness for a safe and equitable vaccine distribution. Y el gobernador de California y dijo que bueno, serán 11 sitios móviles los que se abrirán a partir de esta semana y también 34,000 vacunas que serán distribuidas entre campesinos. We got to keep fighting. Gavin, we got your back. You know that it's about every single child who is waiting to go back to school. It's about every one of our elders who's right now fighting for their dear lives in the ICU. It is about every single nurse right now who's giving someone that they've never met an injection that can save their lives. And we trust you. 
to lead California into its next phase. California plans to lift nearly all its COVID restrictions on June 15th. Governor Gavin Newsom tweeting good COVID-19 news. California has the lowest positivity rate in the country. A statewide plan was announced to get students back into the classroom. And today, Governor Gavin Newsom signed that plan into law. That bill that the governor signed will provide over $6 billion to school districts. This economy is reopening. Schools are back in business. And I think California is uniquely positioned to come roaring back. As we come together virtually across California, I just want to welcome each and every one of you uh, to the California Democratic Party State Convention and take a moment to reflect on how far we all have come over the course of this last year. You know, it was just a year ago, once in a century pandemic arrived on our shores as Donald Trump did everything in his power to ignore the real realities of COVID-19. California, we took a completely different path, one paved by data, health, and science. You know, Californians, hard work, your hard work and your sacrifice, it's saved countless lives. And now all of that effort's finally paying off. You know, to date, we've distributed north of 24 million vaccines, more than all but five nations in the world. And you're vaccinating communities, communities that other states have left behind, communities of color, low-income families, and those most at risk. We put an equity metric up 40% of all our first doses committed to equity as a North Star. And we're well on our way as a consequence of those efforts of finally defeating this virus. California, we're not crawling back. We're gonna come roaring back. And when this pandemic ends, we're not gonna go back to normal. Because I think you would agree with me, normal was never good enough. We're gonna continue to battle the inequities and injustices that this pandemic has exposed and highlighted only further. And we're gonna leverage this once in a lifetime moment to ensure every California, regardless of race, regardless of their zip code, can live a healthy, safe and prosperous life. You know, during this crisis, California has invested more than ever before in assistance programs to help lift families from poverty to prosperity, expand access to healthcare like never before. We created the largest small business grant program in the country, two and a half billion dollars of which 77% of those grants have gone to underserved communities. We built the first in the nation fund to provide aid to our undocumented community. We housed more unhoused residents also than any other time in our state's history through Project Room Key and Home Key. And now with the help of the Biden-Harris administration, California is poised to put our fight against inequality into overdrive. But national Republicans and extreme right wingers, they're not sitting back. They're throwing everything they can at their recall power grab, all in a hopes, all in hopes of rolling back all of the important progress we have made together, and we can't let them win. Now, if we place our faith over fear, perseverance, and optimism over hate and division, the power, it's in our hands. This is our moment to create the California we all want to live in, to extend the dream of prosperity, equity, and progress to each and every one of us. I'm honored to be in this fight with each and every one of you. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., do solemnly swear. I, Kamala Davy Harris, do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. Will to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. That I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon which I am about to enter. So help, help me God. God. Congratulations, oh, Mr. President. Right. Today, my whole soul is in this, bringing America together uniting our people, uniting our nation. Without unity, there is no peace, only bitterness and fury. No progress, only exhausting outrage. 
This is our historic moment of crisis and challenge. And unity is the path forward. We will get through this together, together. May this be the story that guides us, the story that inspires us, and the story that tells ages yet to come that we answer the call of history. We met the moment. Democracy and hope, truth and justice did not die in our watch, but thrive. That America secured liberty at home and stood once again as a beacon to the world. May God bless America and may God protect our troops. Thank you, America. Delegates and guests, the next video from SEIU California includes some spoken Spanish with English subtitles. Every day before going to work, I made sure that I said a prayer. Because I know by going to work every day, I was putting myself at risk. I was putting my family at risk. Yo soy eh, trabajador esencial, estuve eh, con COVID hospitalizado por dos semanas, mi esposa por dos semanas en los ventiladores, mi hijo estuvo por 26 días en los ventiladores y mi hija salió infectada también. Having the, the government tell us you have to stay home, stay safe, to not spread COVID, uh, it's difficult, you know, for in situations as a, myself as a home care because I still have to go out. I'm an essential worker. Our jobs were heightened in the sense that uh, we became these essential workers and, and we realize now that we've always been essential workers. Yo en lo personal tuve que mandar a mis hijos con mi suegra para Riverside por miedo de llegarlos a infectar porque yo estuve en riesgo con una compañera que salió con COVID y estuvo en el hospital. Duré tres meses sin ver a mis hijos. El Día de las Madres no los vi y eso fue bien duro para mí. Eso duele mucho no tener a mis hijos por miedo de llegar a infectarlos. The hardest part of COVID was when my father passed away. It was early in April um, and not being able to be with my family, not being able to hug my mom not being able to mourn with them. Um, it really altered who I was. Um, during that time, I was working in the ICU and I was trying to get some sort of mourning uh, by being able to deliver the best care to patients as I wish that same care was being given to my father. Los billonarios cada vez están haciendo más ricos y los trabajadores esenciales cada vez están muriendo mucho más. This is not the natural order. This is something that we've built as systems in place. I think understanding uh, that what we're experiencing today uh, really comes from a historical decisions that were made purposefully, like the freeways, the corridors, the housing, those were all purposely made and then historically disinvested. We have the ability to change this, but we have to do this together. Having a much more united network of elected officials and organizations within the community to support uh, home care workers and other essential workers, I think is very crucial moving forward from what we experienced in the past year. Because COVID-19 has shown the true value of essential workers. And we definitely need the support, we need the encouragement, and we're counting on all of you to stand with us to build back better. Together, we can make sure that everyone has access to healthcare. Podemos crear una sociedad más compasiva. We can create the society that values black lives. Podemos incluir y valorar a nuestros vecinos y familiares inmigrantes. Thank you, California Democrats, for standing with working people. Thank you for believing that we can do this together. Thank you for your commitment to equity. 
Ahora estamos listos para ponernos a trabajar. Delegates and guests, please welcome former California Governor Jerry Brown. Welcome to the 2021 Democratic State Convention, virtually. Yeah, we got rid of Trump, but we still got lots of problems. The social inequities, the growing disruption to our climate, uh, the difficulties that kids have in our schools, not just virtually, but getting the opportunities they need to get the learning that they really are capable of. We've got a lot to do, Democrats. So as you meet and as you discuss, Figure out a way to mobilize locally, but across the state. This is the time not to be faint of heart, but to be resolute, to galvanize, to summon the political will to keep turning California around. Thank you. Delegates and guests, please welcome California Secretary of State, Dr. Shirley Weber. This year, California made history. Dr. Shirley Weber, our Secretary of State a fearless advocate who takes on the tough fights, a moral champion on the front lines of the struggle for justice, an experienced leader who's protecting every Californian's right to vote. From public housing to a PhD from UCLA at 26, from San Diego to the state legislature, where she fought for education and criminal justice reform and defended civil rights and voting rights. That's why, in a time of unprecedented partisan attacks on our democracy, Secretary Weber is fighting to ensure every Californian's voice counts. Hello, fellow Democrats. I'm Dr. Shirley Weber, and I am the first African-American to serve as Secretary of State in the 170-year history of California. And I am honored that Governor Newsom chose me to serve. But let me tell you who I really am, beyond all the things that you hear about me. I am the great-granddaughter of former slaves on both sides of my family. And I'm the granddaughter of a sharecropper in Hope, Arkansas, who saw one of the worst race riots in the history of this country in Elaine, Arkansas. And despite the intimidation and the difficulty and the hardness of that life, my dad still believes strongly in this country and fought hard for his dignity and his right and his family to stand strong. And as a result of that, came to California because there was no hope in Hope, Arkansas for African-Americans. And he brought his wife and six children to this golden state because he knew that he could get the two things that he was so denied. One was an education and the other one was the right to vote. I am here now to secure 40 million individuals right to vote in California, the largest state in the union, the fifth largest economy in the world. And I am proud to represent my grandfather and my great grandfather and my father in this effort. You know, we've had a great year in terms of seeing the power of voting in this nation. We saw what it was like to organize, to get people to the polls. We saw what it was like to basically stand firm on the principles and to make every person feel that their vote really counted. California saw one of the greatest turnouts in its history. Over 17 million Californians voted. Unbelievable as we talk so, so strongly about what do we do now to basically change the direction of this nation. We found that voting was the answer to our, our problem and we implemented it. And so while we are proud as we stand here today with uh, all of our success as Democrats, we also should be greatly concerned because at this very moment, at this very moment, we have those working hard to roll us back to Jim Crow South. That we have those working very hard to nullify the Voting Rights Act of 1965. We have those who are determined that there are only certain people who should vote and others should not. But I'm here to tell you today that we will stand tall and strong in California. We must realize that we have this unique responsibility, that we will never give up, that we will never give out, and we'll never give in, that there's something worth fighting for called democracy, and we have the responsibility to do it each and every day. So I thank you for having me here. 
I thank for the governor for appointing me the Secretary of State of California, the largest state in the nation, the fifth largest economy in the world. And we are going to defend the right to vote, the precious right to vote for every Californian. And we will assist our brothers and sisters across this nation to do likewise. Because we will not make mockery of our legacy of those who work so hard to give us so much. Have a good evening. As we continue to return to classrooms, parents like me want to make sure we're doing it safely. Especially in the underserved communities hardest hit by COVID. Trust me, no one wants to get back to classroom learning more than teachers like me. Using common sense safety measures like masks, physical distancing, and proper ventilation. Safety is why we're prioritizing vaccinations for educators. Because working with our local communities, we will all get through this together safely. Delegates and guests, please welcome Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris. Hello, California Democrats. First of all, I want to thank Rusty for all you do and to all of our party's leaders for your hard work. And of course, I want to thank our friend and our governor, Gavin Newsom, for his leadership. And of course, Gavin and I go back to being elected at the same time in San Francisco many, many years ago. And I'll tell you, I've seen firsthand what a leader he is and how he really does put his heart into his work on behalf of the people of California. And President Joe Biden and I support him 100%. Above all, I have to thank all of you, the Democrats of California, who supported me every time my name has been on the ballot for district attorney, attorney general, for Senator and for Vice President of the United States. As a daughter of California who is in the White House, I thank you. It is because of you and your hard work. And just look at what you have accomplished just last year alone. In the middle of a devastating pandemic, California Democrats, well, you called and you texted and you Zoomed into rallies. And because of your hard work, we held on to the House of Representatives because of your hard work, we won back the United States Senate. Because of your hard work, President Joe Biden and I are hard at work today in the White House. And because of your hard work, we're going to keep Governor Gavin Newsom in Sacramento and help Democrats everywhere win in 2022. So again, thank you. And let's remember, winning elections is just the first step toward progress. Then. We must govern, and that's exactly what we are doing. We just reached the 100-day mark. We've gotten more shots in arms than we initially thought possible. We created more jobs in the first two months than any other administration in history. And through the American Rescue Plan, we're getting more than 30 million checks directly to Californians. We're sending $15 billion in support to our California schools and we're lifting half a million of California children out of poverty. And that's just the beginning. The first step was relief, and our second step will be about recovery and building toward the future. The President and I are now calling on Congress to pass our American Jobs Plan, a plan that will rebuild our nation and put millions of Americans to work in good jobs. 
You know, I was home earlier this month. I went on a tour of the San Leandro Water Treatment Facility in Oakland, which is just across the freeway, 580, from where our family once lived in Oakland. And I met some of the workers there, union members, carpenters, construction inspectors, highly skilled workers. And they're getting clean tap water to the tap. And that takes state-of-the-art infrastructure and a strong workforce. And I believe that clean water is a right. As Democrats, we believe that clean water is a right. And that's why we've got to invest in water infrastructure. As Democrats, we believe everyone should have access to their essential needs, which include affordable broadband. And in the 21st century, they should have access and it should be affordable. So we've got to invest in broadband infrastructure. We believe that our environment is precious and should be protected. And so we must invest in clean energy. We believe that childcare should be affordable and available to every working parent. And that's why we have to invest in it. Care infrastructure, well, it, it's simple. It holds up our nation. So through the American Jobs Plan, we're going to replace every lead pipe in California. We're going to connect every California household with broadband. And we're going to strengthen our state's care infrastructure. This is what I call American aspiration. That ability to see what can be, unburdened by what has been. That determination to do, not just to dream even in hard times, especially in hard times. Californians, with your help, we got the American Rescue Plan signed into law. And now, the President and I need your help to get the American Jobs Plan passed. And it will be a victory for our entire nation. Thank you again for all of your hard work. It is so important. Thank you. Delegates and guests, please join us again tomorrow at 10 a.m. for General Session 3. Thank you for attending.